Kmart, Canada's saving place. I better get up there real quick. Here it is. Here it is. Okay, five, two, and G one, four. Three, two. Ready, one, and roll it. That's the end of another fall season. Very good season, I must say. Oh, Debbie, hold my calls, will you please? Thank you very much. Great to have these wonderful executive secretaries. My office. My office. Chesterfields. Plants. Chairs. Executive telephones. Fancy seats? Well, it's not my office. Now I'll go and show you my office. But it was nice to be in here for a moment. Now we're getting closer to my office, down in the bowels of BCTV. This, this ring is still sweaty. Would you believe it? From All Star Wrestling. And that's where we are. You know, in the high-class section, the working section of British Columbia Television, where we put out Webster almost each and every day in life. Well, round one more corner and I'm in my office, my own executive suite, for the final story conference of the year. Good morning, Mr. Webster. And are you all... Please stop typing when the boss is here. Are you all doing your work today? Yes, Mr. Webster. <coughs> Are you happy in the service? Yes, yes Mr. Webster. Is there anything you would like me to do for you? Get lost, <laughs> Mr. Webster. This is the kind of respect I get from my magnificently brilliant staff, and we're going to walk around them and see what they have to say under... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Under perceptive questioning, is the car still running? Oh, for co of course. We well, that's a, that's a change. What the hell are you doing? This is tomorrow's interview, Jack. I'm all set for, well, not tomorrow, after the holidays. This is it. It oh, looks good, geez. too. It's looking really good. <laughs> it's never, looked good. <laughs> never looked any better. That's though. Hans Walraven. This is Cliff Larando, the cop. And who is this waif, this waif of the storm? Uh, haven't you got to know me yet? Not really. Mark Schneider. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> Mom. <laughs> what do you do, Mark, baby? Jack, I'm your brains. Remember I told you that last year? <laughs> <laughs> That's why we had a tough year. <coughs> this lady is the what Duchess. What did you say his name was? <laughs> this is the Duchess. You've only been with us how long? Since August. August. And you really And you haven't right remembered well. my name once. Spell succinct. S-U-C-C -C inked. <laughs> Good for you. Here's the bright one. Hey, <laughs> take a shot to this. Speaking of the bright one. Pat, it's smiling. This is an <laughs> annual smile of the year. Now, smile again. Thanks, Jack, baby. You can keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Pat is the director of the program. She cuts cameras, bosses everybody, and gets snarly in the morning. <laughs> Pamela. Yes. You're the light of our life. How is it you can take awkward people and make them smile at half past seven in the morning after you've made them up. It could have something to do with the jokes I tell, perhaps, in the morning. Jokes? Yes. You tell jokes in the well, morning? Well, you know. Now, what's your real name? That's Pamela Mason. <laughs> and what do you do, ma'am? You're a fairly new face around here. Well, I'm the secretary to Mr. Webster, and I try to make it in at 7 a.m. precisely, but I haven't been doing very well lately. Uh, what is your real name? Jeanette. Jeanette what? Not Ginty, it's Jeanette. Well, what's wrong with Ginty? Well, I'd prefer to be called Jeanette. Okay, Jinty, I'll do my best in 1985. <laughs> Here's Joanne. Joanne, tell them the secret that you and I have together, the one that embarrasses you and humiliates you. The one about you never having your tie that matches the jacket? 
We mean color coordination? Color coordination, that's my specialty. I bet there's another thing. Which was it, the cowboy? Which embarrasses the cowboy you. One? Oh, the no, one I can. We oh, call her sorry. the cowboy. We call her. She wears cowboy, cowboy boots. With evening dresses, she wears cowboy <laughs> boots. But what's the other thing? Give me my moment of glory. I beat you at racquetball. Oh, racquetball, but I jump around too much. Yes. I'm going to Hawaii. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> it's a private joke. <laughs> we'll leave that one out of touch. Here is the uncrowned king of the cusp. <laughs> Steve, how long have you been with me now? Oh, long enough to figure out what this does. I'm not sure why. When you find out, let me know. I will. You'll be the first. Well, hopefully, we'll all stay together until they're all getting their old age pensions. Um, we've covered Hanson and, and uh, Paul. 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 Let's pick this thing up here. What do you think? He's got it. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Paul, you've been our camera a fair amount of time this year. You're terrific. I want to tell you that. And furthermore, ladies and gentlemen, he's single, he's handsome, he's got money, and he's on the loose. <laughs> but what's Paul's last name again? Rowan. Paul Rowan. Thanks very much, Thank Paul. you, sir. Right. Follow me about every day next year, except when I tell you not to follow okay. me. Bye. Bye, Mr. Good morning. Now you'll see how the other half, the Webster half of BCTV, lives in high executive style. It's most unfortunate, however, that on this last live show of our fall season, I find it necessary to interview another bedeviled author. God knows some of them are terrible bores, but this one will probably beat the band. The good news is that it is not Pierre Burton, Farley Mowat, uh, June Colwood, Alan Fotheringham. It is instead a man who has been 50 years on the fringes of public life, a man of low intellectual quality, a man of dubious integrity, and generally all round a pain in the neck. A man who is going to attempt to get us to sell his book for him. It's a big book, empty book, called Terror in the Name of Talk. And also on this program this morning, speaking of imposters, is another garrulous imposter who believes he is a talk show host on television with uh, a Scotch accent. And here's the kind of stuff he does in punchlines in downtown Vancouver. Any more quick questions? Ring, ring. <laughs> Jacket. <laughs> Where did you get that jacket? And you'll see more of Rich Elwood from Punchlines on this morning show, as well as meeting many other interesting, fascinating, astute, perceptive, alert people. After the break. Hi, everybody. This is Connie Francis, and I'm here to wish my good friend, that lovable rogue, Mr. Jack Webster, the very, very best and merriest of Christmases, and to you, too. My guest this morning has the highest priced and poorest value book of the year. It's called, as you saw, Terror in the Name of Talk, and subsidized as it is by Canada Council, the shelf price, for a few days anyway, is $99.95. Now, sir, let me make it perfectly clear. I have not read your book, nor do I intend to read your book, but I have read the publisher's blurb, and my first basic question to you is, how dare you milk such an undistinguished career for such a fat book? What's the book all about? Well, let me make myself perfectly clear. I did not write the book for illiterates like you, sir. I wrote the book for people with a knowledge of current affairs. And for your own information, this is the shortened, concise version of my very distinguished career, which is not yet, even yet, at its zenith. So what you've done is milk your career as a two-bit ombudsman and as a guy who has always been totally unfair to decent people in public life and attempted to turn it into something which is socially significant. Can you name one thing, as a matter of which fact, I've done which is socially quiet, significant? Sir, as a matter of fact, it would take me considerable time to go through the items of social significance which I have achieved. But I remember well once, in, once well, in 1954, in a hamlet in the Fraser Valley, Fraser Valley, 
I did manage to get a sewer cleaned after 7 o'clock at night by getting out a works department crew. Apart from that, I've cleaned out a few political sewers as well in my time. Fortunately, I've been able to convince these politicians to do their own plumber plunging most of the time. Have you ever nailed your own cross to a political mast? Well, I want to be quite frank about that. There are so many political masts around that I never knew which cross to nail it to. Was I a communist? Never, ever. Was I a fascist? Never, ever. Was I a socialist? Well, who knows. Liberal on some days, and a conservatives on the day when I got my paycheck. I never nailed my flag to a mast because I never could find one with solid enough wood to stick anything into. I trust, and I'm going to ask you a question, is this your final tour for your retirement? Because I remember one celebrated occasion when you lied on the air and you said if the Prime Minister quit, you would quit, and you never did. How can you get away with such nonsense? Well, you lie on the air, that's how you get away with such nonsense. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a Pierre Burton Charlie Lynch caper. Every time you're thinking of retirement, you write a book which uh, doesn't quite... Uh, it really covers all the things you didn't have guts enough to say while you were working. And my book is a great example of a reportage of the stuff I didn't have guts enough to print while I was working. That's why you write a book. You've got to save up these little gems and give the cast-offs to Fotheringham and other little people who crawl around defeat at times. You save up the gems for your book. You charge the maximum possible price. And, of course, I'll be autographing soon, you know. I'll give you the details later. Uh, could this be best described as a vanity book published by you out of the proceeds, the enormous sums of money you seem to boast about, but which I'm sure you don't really make, a vanity book, vanity press, paid for by yourself? Why the hell do you think it's $99.95? Because I must be able to sell at least a dozen copies, and that will recover the cost of the book. Of course it's vanity press, you fool. Who else would publish all this drivel? Mind you, it's no worse drivel than some of the stuff that you put on the air on every occasion you have a program. And God knows what payoffs you get in the back room for all these interminable authors who troop through your studio filling up your program for you because you're too damn lazy to go out and do any reporting. Does your book cover your distinguished academic career as a PhD? Would you care to tell us what the backdoor deal was that gave you a PhD from some local two-bit university? Well, I object to the local two-bit university, but I bought the PhD. I gave them a million dollars cash, and if you believe that, you'll believe anything. And why we're on the subject of your vanity, have you really lost 30 pounds? Looks to me like you're as fat as the proverbial pig. You be careful what you say. I've lost 32 pounds, man and boy. Matter of fact, over the years, I've lost 350 pounds. But this time around, I have lost 32 pounds, and if you dare to challenge that, I'll sue you. You ain't no skeleton yourself, Webster. You twit. You fink. And by the way, Webster, I want my pound of flesh. Flesh. I want a chance to tell you exactly where and when I'm autographing in downtown Vancouver today. No, I will not plug your autographing party. I refuse to. I shall be back without terror in the name of talk after the break. It's in the bookstores now, in time for Christmas. Thrill your loved ones with the uncut memoirs of the incredible Jack Webster. Terror in the name of talk. And if you buy more than four copies now at the incredibly steep price of $99.99, you get absolutely free an audio tape recording of Jack's favorite diet story. You don't even have to leave your TV set. Just send your check, money order, or used appliances to Jack's favorite phone booth in Chinatown and find out how you too can look just like this absolutely free. We guarantee you'll be sick or your money will be forwarded to the Old Scotch Broadcasters Relief Fund. Act now. Terror in the name of talk. I'm honored now by the presence, by special request this morning, of a relic from International Women's Year of 1975. Distinguished author, authoress, uh, by the name of Valerie Rosedale, who has written a magnificent book which you forgot to bring with you. I assumed you had a free copy, but you sold it, I'm sure. What's the name of the book? Debunks Illustrated History of the Canadian Establishment. <laughs> what does the Debunks Illustrated History of the Canadian Establishment oh, thank say? thank you for repeating it. Say about Brian Mulroney. Well, we don't deal with Ottawa. We consider living in Ottawa to be capital punishment. 
But it is interesting that Ottawa is run primarily by the distaff establishment. Distaff? The distaff establishment, the distaff is the phallic symbol at the top of the spinning wheel. The largest example in Canada is the CN Tower in Toronto, which was erected during International Women's Year to teach the men of Toronto humility. I see. Unfortunately, it never worked. I see. But you see, people don't vote for men. Pierre Trudeau would be unknown in the United States if it weren't for Margaret going to that t little trade school, Discotheque 54. She had a baby last week without any help from him whatsoever. Did, and didn't have it on Christmas Day either. No. She shelled up for Halloween the third time. We had the shepherds waiting on the common house lawn. The only star in the east that came by was Robert Stanfield. <laughs> Maureen Lucky Matthew. it wasn't Richard Hatfield. Well, Mr. Mr. Hatfield is just uh, getting by with a little help from his friends, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Maureen McTeer kept her name because biologically we can prove that the child is associated with the mother at birth, but the identity of the husband is a matter of faith. <laughs> People did not vote for Brian Mulroney. They voted for Mila because this country needs a prime mistress. Why would they vote for a man who couldn't run an ore house in Quebec? <laughs> couldn't run a what in Quebec? An ore house. An ore house in Quebec. <laughs> I see. I just misunderstood you for the moment. Was it not a fact that at one time in your life you ran an, an ore house in Toronto? I, an ore house? I've never been connected with, the, with business. My, my husband is in the stock exchange. Every day I dress him, I feed him, I send him out to play. Before I know it, he's done something nasty on the floor. And who has to clean up the mess? Of course. <coughs> How many times has Valerie been married? The? I believe that. One, when one commits holy matrimony, one is for life. I think the law has been far too lenient in that regard. And I'm very happy to find out that last year in Canada, although one marriage in three is, ends in divorce, the other two are apparently determined to fight it out to the bitter end. Last year, engagements outnumbered vasectomies for the first time in 10 years. Well, that's really quite socially significant. Well, the old-fashioned way of tying the knot is coming back, you see. <laughs> I see. <laughs> tying the knot, I get it. Instead, I, tying the knot, we'll leave that unexplained, shall we? How many marriages I, did I you... imagine in your case the stud has been put to pasture. <laughs> 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 That's self-evident, I must confess. Now, tell me this. Uh, how many times have you been married, Valerie? Oh, just once. Just Engaged once. twice. Mm -hmm. Engaged is almost as good as being married. In my case, it was better. What do, you th what do you think about this new sexual morality, this promiscuity, this common law, this disgusting lowering of standards in the 1980s? Well, I think that only marriage makes for good breeding. I think one's honor is a marketable quality, not a weekend pass to be dispensed at leisure. Mm -hmm. I think, you see, that we of the upper classes have kept this fabric of society together, not necessarily the males who go blabbing to every member of the kept press, but the women. You see, we go back many, many thousands of years. We, 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 who took the, the fall for the bitten fruit in the garden? I don't know. Who Eve? took the fall? Do, who was the snake in the grass? We know Adam. Who was. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, just damnable, the things you have suffered as a woman. When were you first liberated? I am not women's lip. If you anything, are. I am a women's feminist. aggressive conservative. I believe a woman's place is in the country club. I would far rather be teed off in the back nine than hung over a kitchen stove. <laughs> I believe in lunch, but not at home. Our clubs are our only weapons, Jack. Prime Minister Trudeau, that was ex-Mr. Trudeau, got $50,000 from the Albert Einstein Foundation for his North, South, East, West dialogue. We have one of those every Thursday afternoon in our bridge club. Tell me this. Um has Valerie ever appeared on the same program as Don Hannon? Of course. I was interviewed by him on his silly little show. Were you? Yes. What do you think of him? Bit of a twit, isn't he? Yes, I think he's hopelessly middle class and, and, and outclassed by, uh, uh, well, I, he's not as bad as the other. No, the other. Mr. Farquhar. Oh, Farquharson? No, of course not. Mr. Farquharson was, was really... thrust upon me by Macmillan. I'm very glad... And what do you do about Mr. Farquharson when he comes up with these off-color dirty jokes and things like that? Single entendre is not wit. Double entendre and triple entendre no, is I'm, wit. I'm, you, I, I, I am... Uh, there's been a rumor going around that we are related. He says we have common ancestors in Ireland. <laughs> if you go back far enough up the tree, we're all related, aren't we, according to Charles yeah, Darwin? Tell me, have you come across at your age now, attractive though you still may be under all your glamour, uh, have you come across the John Turner syndrome much? Yes. What do you do if a man does the John Turner thing to you? Well, I think every woman deserves a pat on the back, but not that far down. <laughs> John Turner is Canada's Paul Newman. And I think, you see, now, he is run by chills, Turner. 
and she doesn't want to live in Ottawa. So that's why they're moving to Vancouver. I wish they'd moved to Victoria, which is the spiritual home of the upper class, the home of the diphthong, the other side of Foul Bay Road. That's where we are, the lingua anglica. You wouldn't understand, you're from Glasgow. But I want another but little... Edinburgh on, on a Sunday afternoon has the lingua anglica. That's right. We have the lingua glaswegica. Now, tell me a little bit more... The glottal about, stops. Tell me a little bit more about the debunking of the Brits, or debunking of the Canadian Well, there was a hefty piece Pick of fluff somebody. that came out last year. Yourself? No, no, I'm not a hefty piece of... I mean, <laughs> I, I have an hourglass figure. Granted, most of the sand is on the wrong end. I'm not on the pretty, pretty kin diet. I had a little pussy called Prettykins, and she died, so I think you should be careful, Jack. <laughs> But uh, what was I saying? You were, telling me, so, you were telling me about debunks. Yes, how there well was a book called De Bretts came out last oh, year. Oh, and Peter Newman was going to sue you. Well, Peter Parvenu, I prefer to call him, yeah, so, so. standing there. You can't write a book when you're bent over peeking through a keyhole, Jack. This is the inside view of the Canadian establishment. Well, I'm indeed debted for your opinions this morning. Are you autographing today? No, I'm not desecrating anything. Nothing whatsoever? Yeah. Uh, guess who Valerie is? Now drop the mask and be yourself. All right, Jack, I'll do that. Who are you? I'm Tom Jack Webster in drag. That's who I am. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a better. <laughs> he's a better Jack Webster in drag than I am. My thanks to Don Harren. Don, Don, you're obscene. <laughs> but not hurt. <laughs> oh dear, thanks again, Don. Have a good year next year. Have another great season. And I'll be back after the break with God knows what. Hello, Jack. You remember me? I'm the girl from downtown West Yule. Well, I don't care what anyone else says about you, because I know that you're just a great big teddy bear. Happy Christmas. A couple of weeks ago, we heard about a guy doing a takeoff on Webster at Punchlines, a very bright guy by the name of Rich Elwood. So, of course, nothing would satisfy our narcissistic interest, but they, that we'd go down there with a camera crew, listen in and watch. And here is Elwood Webster in action. What are you selling? No comment, and that's not for publication. <laughs> Don't get obstinate with me. <laughs> You've been in the country a great number of years, and you're an accredited broadcaster, talk show journalist. <laughs> Is it true you're going to be recording a rock video in a couple of months? <laughs> I'm going to put you through like I'm put through, because every now and again you get some local doad, no names, no <laughs> Mike Van Der Zam or Billy Harcourt. Yeah. And you ask them a question and they behave exactly like you do. Stupid. <laughs> But you haven't got the telephone technique right. We also don't have a line coming in. <laughs> On a good day, I don't need a line. <laughs> but you've got to perfect your technique. Yeah, that well, is then... very good, but your technique is bloody off. <laughs> Then give me some pointers. <laughs> you've, got to have, you've got to have patience, tolerance, yeah. and yeah. understanding. Yeah. And that's what keeps me going. I figured that to be the case. 
Now look into that camera, and do your opening again, and your close again, for my purposes tonight. Nothing to do with comedy. No. It's for the purposes of continuity. That, let's see you do, I'll give you a challenge. All right. A good Webster opening, where first of all, you introduce your two guests, for, three guests for the morning. Bennett. Yeah. Yeah. Monroe, Jack Monroe. Yeah. And, uh, Brian Mulroney. Brian Mulroney. No, Pierre Trudeau. Pierre Trudeau. Now, let's see you do a Webster opening. Good morning, etc. All right. First of all, the music. <laughs> <laughs> Get your glasses on right. Okay. Cue them, cue them, Joanne. <laughs> Good morning! 9 a.m. precisely! No! What? 9, 9 a.m. precisely comes at the end of the show. You're doing a, an opening at the beginning. <laughs> Good morning, and now you're opening. All right. <laughs> Good morning! We've got a great show for you today. <laughs> if we could dispense with the heckling. <laughs> On today's show, we've got Jack Monroe, Brian Mulroney, and there's a good chance that Pierre Trudeau will be coming along. Why, I don't know. <laughs> but it makes for good ratings. <laughs> Hope you stick around, enjoy the program. We're here this morning, Webster, 9 a.m. precisely. <laughs> oh. Now do a closing. And you finish with, I'll be back tomorrow at 9 a.m. precisely. Do a closing. Insult the guests and do a closing. <laughs> <laughs> be back again tomorrow morning. We'll be talking to Bill Bennett about where Grace McCarthy buys her makeup. <laughs> At 9 a.m. precisely. I'm sure we can be forgiven some excesses this morning. Uh, as we go through the year, we run into serious stories, happy stories, miserable stories, indecisive stories, terrible stories, dull days, bright days, quiet days, and happy days. But this morning, we're going to put some time aside to take some telephone calls, although we've got some other goodies to throw at you in the course of the program. Uh, what are we doing after this? Well, we'll see what we do after this, but you can start calling now because nothing will be terribly long after the break. Hello. I'm Dr. Broadbent, and I've had a careful look at this book by one Dr. Webster, and I have never seen such a banal collection of cliches in all my life. However, he is a splendid fellow, and I wish him the very merriest of Christmas. Don't get the wrong idea, though, that we're off the air totally between now and when we come back live in January. We're running the best of Webster, and I must make one specific announcement this morning, what I think was the most impressive guest I had all year, and it is none other than Helen Caldicott. And Caldicott will be rebroadcast at 9 a.m. on the 26th, Boxing Day, a very suitable time to rebroadcast Helen Caldicott. And we picked that date particularly because a number of Parents wanted their kids to see the program in Toto at 9 a.m. on Boxing Day. Caldicott, an incredible woman. We'll go first to Victoria. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How well, are you this morning? Very well indeed, thank you. Just want to tell you you're doing a hell of a job, and the best of luck to you in the new year and the future. I don't know where they found that other Webster, though, do you? Uh, I don't know. They could have dug him up here in Victoria somewhere. <laughs> Thanks very much indeed. Hello. Hello. That's you. Yes, uh, Jack, I wanted to compliment on your show and uh, also ask you, is there any um, methods that you know of of the 
public sector being able to vote on some of these crucial issues in a, a ballot collected way, such as instead of um, having uh, fanatics that run around anti-abortion, anti-porn, anti-this, anti-that, uh, who wreck a lot of freedom for other people in the country, is there a way of putting everybody's toll down on a piece of paper, counting up the votes and deciding what the decision should not, be? Not unless you go to the American system of petition for changing laws or recall to get rid of uh, the, the houses in between times. As long as you've got the British parliamentary system, the decision's in the hands of the elected representatives, and these are the people whom you must harry. Go ahead, please. Hello? Yes. Hi, Jack, I'd just like to say I've been watching you for a year now. And you're great. Where were you before then? Pardon? Where were you before then? I was just too young. I'm, oh. I'm only 22. Oh, thank God I've got somebody under 80. <laughs> but let me tell you, I sure have learned a lot off your show, like about political and everything else. You're a great guy, and you should keep it up. You've got another good 40 years to go yet. Well, 39 anyway, and thank you very much, young one. Go ahead, please. Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Yes, I really enjoyed El Wood this morning. He was great, wasn't he? Yes, it was beautiful. I really enjoy your show. Good. Uh, that's the first time I'd heard about El Wood, but never been to see him before, and he's terrific. Yeah, in fact, it was a real of, great laugh this morning. All of the people at Punchlines have got a hell of a lot of talent, I'll tell you. Much obliged, ma'am. Merry Christmas. Go ahead, please. Good morning, Jack. Morning. Uh, Merry Christmas. All the best in the new year, and keep up the good work, you old devil. Uh, not that old. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Go ahead, please. Good morning, Jack. Morning. Good morning. I really enjoyed your program this morning, and I believe that if there's anyone that can interview you, it's yourself. I thought it was just great, so Merry Christmas. Take care. And by the way, tell Don he looks great in a dress. By the way, when I was interviewing myself, I've got to tell you something very weird and strange. I, When I was sitting over there as the author talking to Webster, I did not like myself at all. I that thought, right? that bloody Webster is a real fink. <laughs> I, I could feel my gods rising. Maybe I'm schizophrenic. You never can tell. Go. Oh, one more. Go ahead, please. That's me. That's you. Good morning. Morning, Fun way to uh, start on a gray day. Thank you very much. Whatever happened to Gladys? Oh, Gladys went on to greater and greater glories and is doing very well and did thank her. Gladys was with me on radio for years and years after Linda. It was Linda, and then there was Gladys. She uh, was a super lady, and I wanted her to know that she was missed. I didn't know if she'd retired or what. Oh, no, no, she's still working, and her husband is doing very well, thank you. And nice of you to ask, and I'll say hello to Gladys, too, while I get a chance. Mm -hmm. Now, talking about women on my staff, we have a new staff uh, member, researcher, uh, on the staff this year by the name of Anne Davidson. And she went out to Woburn Ladies College in Surrey, the first of its kind in North America and the grand European tradition. Jack, when I came to work for you, you said I was terribly unfinished. Well, I'm going to take a crash course today in an honest-to-goodness finishing school, and it's in Surrey. We'll take you inside to meet the two ladies that run the school, Barbara Russell Cox and Shirley Russell Cox. Come on in. Hello, I'm... How nice to meet you. I'm Barbara Russell Cox. How, How do you do? I'm Shirley Russell Cox, and welcome to Woburn Ladies College. Thank you. I feel like I'm stepping backwards in time. Isn't a finishing school old-fashioned? Oh, I hope not. What can be old-fashioned about good manners? I think good manners are present day, whatever day. I don't think it's old-fashioned. And it's not frivolous to want to go to a finishing school? No. I think the, the great joy about this particular school is that finishing school in the past has always been for, for young ladies that come from very wealthy homes. Um, sending your daughter to Switzerland is very, very expensive. This finishing school here in Surrey enables many more people to have an opportunity to attend finishing school. Excellent. Could you show me around? Yes, I'd love to. Thank you. is a ballet class, but it's based mainly on posture and poise. The whole purpose of this class is so that the young ladies during their lifetime will know how to walk, how to sit, and how to feel comfortable with their body. 
There are only 16 young ladies here at the moment, Jack, learning all this grace and charm. They've been here for a few weeks now, and the full complement of 50 students won't start until January. These 50 students will have five instructors and could pay up to $9,000 a year if they also plan to board at the school. Are you crazy? While you and I are talking here, there are four musicians playing downstairs for $70 an hour. I'll talk to you later when we're dancing. Come on, get Mimsy and let's go. They are at the moment rehearsing for a piece of Neil Simon's California Suite, but they also do quite a lot of improvisation, mainly to give them poise and to, to help them with their public speaking. Exactly. Either she's sick or she's not sick. She's not. Is she sick? She's not sick. Then let's have a wedding. That looks really pretty on you. Now, what, would you wear that for a job interview? No, I don't think so, because of the veil. It's a little too, it's a little too detailed for the job interview, but what, it's, what is it perfect for? Evening wear? Evening wear, perhaps. We were discussing hats to the theater. Take it out and have a seat, Sandra. That's better. Uh, Why is it important um, to know what hat to wear? Well, hats are very fashionable at the moment. And if they choose a hat with a very large rim and they're going to the theater, for example, it can be very irritating to the person sitting behind them. So one tries to show them why we, we use different hats for different occasions. Ooh. Do you think the instructor could find me a hat and, and show me how to wear it? I think so, yes. Let's try and see. You'd like to choose a hat? Yes, please. I would well, like to. No. First of all, because of the outfit that you have on, it can certainly be worn from day into evening wear. Be perfect for luncheon engage engagements or after five. I think a hat that would go with that. I think Indiana Jones look. We're going to put it on. May I disturb your hair? Please do. We look mysterious. When we come to a brim hat, it's nice to look mysterious. Not to have it onto the back of the head, but bring it forward so that you can peeping from outside of the brim. What do you think, ladies? Oh, that, that, looks nice. mm. that hat, would you wear that for a job interview, ladies? No. no. It's a bit much? Well, yeah. that's right. Yeah. It has the large brim. And perhaps the attention of the prospective <laughs> employer would go to the hat and not... And I can only see out of one eye. Correct. <laughs> and it's very important during the job interview to have eye-to-eye -eye contact. That looks very nice on you. Jack, you know it's very important to learn to wear your hat with flair and confidence so you feel comfortable in any surroundings. There's also a very proper way to handle your other accessories. Did you know there's a graceful way of handling your gloves? And a ladylike way of removing your coat. Charlie, I'm very impressed. Sure you don't have just putting on gloves and hats. Is there an academic program? Yes, there is. We offer all grade 11 and 12 academic subjects so that students can take their provincial exams here. And we also offer a very, very wide recreational activity of horse riding, tennis, golf, swimming. And are they instructed in all these? Yes, they are. Where are you going from here, Shirley? Well, at the present time, we're working on enrollment for January, and it looks as if we will have full enrollment for January. Are they all going to be from this area? No, they're not. Um, we have quite a few students from this area. We have one or two coming from Toronto, and one from California, Saudi Arabia, wow. and Mexico, and Costa Rica. Oh, that's So awesome. it's uh, quite a collection of students from different backgrounds. Well, I appreciate the visit today, and I'm awfully glad you've come out to give us colonials some finishing. <laughs> thank you well, very much. thank you for coming. We appreciate it. Our thanks to the ladies of Warburton Finishing School and to Anne Davidson, who did an excellent job. I know now take off my gloves. <laughs> Makes you feel quite pretty. Go ahead, please. Good morning, Jack. Morning. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas, and I've always enjoyed your program. Good. Um, I always admire this guy, Schneider. He's a very sharp-looking guy. Oh, don't give him any praise. <laughs> oh, Schneider, oh, he's sharp. He's coming along, too, Schneider. Where's Schneider? No, let's talk about hockey. 
How, what do you think about the Vancouver Canucks? How are they doing right now? Oh, I'm absolutely baffled and foiled and disappointed that they're winning. Uh, I'm beating Montreal last night. You know, I was going to give them a real roasting this morning, but after three victories in a row, I've got to take back my words about firing Harry Neal, but I won't take them back. You think See? he's going to be back next year? I don't know. I've been buying these tickets for cash since they started, and I hate to think I could have retired on the money I've spent on hockey tickets. Anyway, that's beside the point. Very have a nice short Christmas, Jack. Thank you. Very shortly, not, uh, not in the next segment, in the section after, we're going to meet this lady, Phaedra, who's a classical mystic, a mystic in the classical European tradition, and she brought her crystal ball with her. But I want to take some of these calls first, and then the top of the next segment. We'll take calls to Phaedra on your future and mine after the break. Merry Christmas, Mr. Webster. Mr. Webster. <laughs> <laughs> I did something for you in a mystical fashion, did I not? Yes. What did I do? Well, last April, you, on your last show, you asked people to bring out their watches. Oh, yes. And I brought one out. The uh, jeweler told me the stem was broken, and it would cost $35 to fix it. So I just took it home and put it in the drawer. And I was playing Yuri Jeller's magic voice. Yeah. And you brought it out and you rubbed it affectionately well, and it started. I did what you told me. I wound it up. It's been running ever since, every day, beautifully. Thank you, sir. The magic of television talk. Go ahead, please. A very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to you and the clan of Webster, Jack. Thank you. Enjoy the holidays of the season because on the job, you're not just a great journalist, but one of the country's very best much to the envy of the Eastern Media Mafia. Hate them, hate them, hate them. Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead, please. Hello. Hello. A I... Merry Christmas to you, Jack, and a good new year. This morning, I thought I tuned into the Vancouver City Council meeting. It's as funny as what your show is this morning. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Go ahead, please. Good morning, Jack, and a Merry Christmas. You too. I've got two comments for you. First right. off, Glad you didn't retire when Pierre did. And number two is, when are you going to be running for premier of BC? Because you'd win. If Bennett doesn't pick up, we'll run in the next election. Yeah, I'm right. Keep it going, Jack. Thank you. Go ahead, please. Good morning, Jack. As a regular viewer, may I thank you for keeping the blood boiling in my veins through the past year. And also, I would like to wish you a happy Christmas, a very happy Hogmanay, and a democratic New Year. And what have you done to my dear old friend Fred Hatt? I wish him a Merry Christmas. If oh, he's Fred, Fred's here. Put a camera on Fred. Wave, Fred. Use five fingers, Fred. Uh, <laughs> okay, Merry off, Fred. Fred. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead, please. Good morning, Mr. Webster. Good morning. I wish you a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year. Best of luck on your book, Terror in the Name of Talk. Uh huh. Christmas helping you with the rest of the BCTV staff. Thank you. I stole the title of the book from Sima Holt. She wrote a book called Terror in the Name of God on the Duke of Ars, the Freedomites. Very good book indeed. It was commonly called Arson in the Kootenays. Arson around the Kootenays. But I stole it and Sima doesn't mind. She may sue me, but she doesn't mind. Go ahead, please. Hello, Jack. Yes. Good morning, Jack. Merry Christmas to you and your family. I want to bring something to your attention. Yes. In 1948, on December the 8th, you kept the news item off the air until you located my wife, Gladys. Uh, the item was that I had been seriously injured at Iron River when I got four ribs broken. Tom! Tom! And I want to say to you, Jack, if I make it till February the 22nd, I'll be 84. Good for you, Tommy. I remember the Iron River kerfuffle very well remember indeed. Remember me? Tom Alsbury, of course I do. <laughs> Tom, a, a good new year to you. God bless you. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. That's amazing. Go ahead, please. Good morning, Jack. Morning. Oh, I watch you all the time. I was wondering how you're making out in your Pritikin diet and are you smoking again? Yeah, I'm smoking, but my Pritikin diet's doing very well. I see a lot remember of that I used to be out to there. The cholesterol. 32 pounds. Oh, that's really good. Do you feel better? 
Uh, yeah, I feel fine. Oh, microphone. <laughs> yeah. Now, oh, I'll take Kelowna. Okay. Go ahead, sir, and then Kelowna. Go ahead, sir. That's you, John. Oh, oh yes. Uh, good morning, uh, Jack. It's John Taylor from the Croton School Board. Uh, we have some serious problems now, but I won't get into that because I know it's uh, not appropriate to your show. Just thought I'd take the chance to, to wish you Merry Christmas. Uh, I, I, I want to also say that uh, I'm, I'm sitting to this morning with members of my family from Trail, and our opinion all is that it's just uh, a tremendous program you've had. The, the satire, the parody has been of excellent quality. The only, the only I th think, thing that might be thought-provoking for you is that one of my... Uh, one of my in-laws remarked to me, this is just the sort of stuff that made the CBC popular. So I, I thought oh you might my want God. to reconsider that. Change the program back to nagging. By the way, my own crystal ball tells me that Heinrich will not chicken out in the meeting with you. Heinrich, Heinrich, whatever you are, don't chicken out in your meeting with Coquitlam School Board or you're a total phony. Apart from that, Heinrich, a Merry Christmas. Frank, thanks very much, John. I shouldn't have said that, should I? I didn't mean to spoil the tone. Go ahead from Kelowna. Kelowna. Good morning, Jet. Morning. How are you, old friend? Fine. It's been many, many years since I used to say, hello, you old Glasgow Tiger, first thing in the morning. Who are you? Well, do you remember the, the garbage boys down to CK&W? The which? Garbage, the, garbage do, the garbage man. Yes. Yes, yes. In CK&W, the last time you spoke to me, you, I was on Columbia Street, we were loading the truck, and you... Uh, Go on. Put down that television sound! You had your, you, you just got a car from another station, Jack. Okay. Oh, no, you mean I was just leaving there to go to LG? Yes, you, you went over to LG, I think, and... Uh, That's right, I waved a fond farewell to a man called right. Hughes. Well, you're a great jagger. I love you then, I love you now, you old beggar. And Hughes had to bring me back a year later at double the money. I can hardly hear you, Jack. I'm 75 and I'm deaf as a post. Oh, but you, you sound as bright, bright as a button. <laughs> All okay. the best to you, Jack. Much old obliged. Now we're going to meet Phaedra, who is a mystic in the classical European tradition and who is, I, I've known you for a number of years, Phaedra. Ten. About ten, ten years. Mm -hmm. Did you bring your crystal ball with you? Surprise, surprise. We're going to go to work on the crystal ball for me and for thee out there after the break. It is a very high honor for me on this, one of the final programs of the Jack Webster Show, which is scheduled to go off the air on January 1, to extend the very special greetings of the International Association of Professional Bureaucrats and particularly to send greetings from its members across Canada. We will all miss the pastoral tones and the poetic words of the soft-spoken Mr. Webster, but we will orbitate it effectively whenever we possibly can. After checking with the most authoritative sources in Washington, the taxi drivers, the bartenders, the barbers, and of course at the highest level, and despite the rumors that are rampant in the city, I can neither officially deny nor confirm that Mr. Webster will move to Washington in February to begin a new television series on the deficit pipeline between Washington and Ottawa. But Jack, I'm looking forward for you being here. Just think, Webster and Reagan in the same city, the effervescent qualities of the flotational bottom, the multisyllabatic interfacing will put the wordational strings at the crocational factor. And not only that, Jack, I'm checking out some of the golf courses for you. <clears throat> this is Jim Boren wishing you a Merry Christmas from Washington, D.C. Cynic though you may be, everybody wants to believe fortune tellers. Phaedra I've known for a number of years. Phaedra is a, a, a mystic, she reads palms, she reads crystal balls. First of all, read my palm, Phaedra, would you? But only good news. <laughs> Which hand? Okay, it doesn't, I'll avoid the one that has all the pen and ink on it. Okay, uh, pen and ink. Um, I will say that off the top, when you're a, a little boy, you made some plans about what you were going to be in your future, then completely 
um, how can I say, veered away from that, opposite from that, got into another occupation, made a move, decided that you were going to get into a certain line of work, did awfully well in that, decided to change from that into another occupation, and you're doing awfully well in that, but you're going to change again in the not too distant future. Oh! You're going to expand. That's what change again. Do I look healthy? Extraordinarily, but however, I do see a great big sign up here. Please do stop smoking. Yeah, it says, uh, not just smoking. Anymore. Crystal ball? <laughs> crystal ball. Do you want to do the crystal ball? Okay. I know my place. Also, it says in your hand that you are far too generous a person. <laughs> I've been uh. saying that for years. <laughs> <before>. <laughs> I think I'll leave you now, Jack. <laughs> um, okay, I will have in here that you've been operating on a five impulse frequency for a little while. That means you've been putting yourself in the position of deciding not to make a decision. However, I will tell you, you've got a great deal of energy going for you. And with regard to two important ventures for the new year, you will be pressed into making a decision at the beginning of the year and do very well in the two new aspects of your life to come. So 75 is, 75? 85 is exceptional for you. It's a super it is. year. Mm -hmm. Good year. Exceptional. Oh, that's terrific. Mm -hmm. What do you, do you see anything in that distance? I see your life. You want your past, your present, or your future. Also, I do see in here that, and in your hand too, backup insurance, that you do have a great deal of psychic ability yourself. Quite good at it. Yes. And it does appear to be handed down to you, so it isn't something that you acquired at birth because of whatever stars you were born under, but rather that it's handed through to you oh, through your family. Oh, we had some weird women in the Webster family, I'll tell you. Why women? They're all my mother and my grandmother. Ho oh, oh, ho, they'd scare you to death. Mystical. Oh, yes, and sad predictions which sometimes came true. Oh. Weird. In fact, I often hear my mother up in the corner of the room. I can hear her talking to me. Big Daisy, we called her. And you know what she's saying? She's saying, Jack, don't do that! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm a bit weird myself, I'll tell you. Thank God. These calls are going to come to thee and me. Can you go on a tone of voice on the phone? Yes, it's vibratory level, and I read vibratory. Yeah, in my younger days, I could tell whether or not they were pregnant, how many kids they'd had, or even... I did it once with Peter Herkos. You, you know, told we, him he was pregnant? No, no, Peter Herkos and I did a show together, and we came out 50-50. I was as good as he was. I believe But you. I wouldn't match it against you, because you're of a superior caliber. You're a wonderful human no, being. No, I wouldn't. Oh. <laughs> now, where am I going? Webster, Crystal Ball, and Fedra. Yes. Go ahead, ma'am. Um, I'm speaking to Sandra? Yes. Uh, okay, what, my, what are my chances of obtaining employment in the new year? Oh, in the new year, it's going to be very good for you. What I do see, there's a, a minor disappointment in the beginning, but don't let that fool you because you have something absolutely magical happening. It looks in February, March. So look forward to February and March because they are going to be sensational. So the beginning of the year, think, I've got something wonderful to look forward to. Say another sentence. Call her. Good. Um, I, do I have another question? No. I, are you 28 and a half years old? No, I'm 31. I wasn't far out. <laughs> Was I? That's this side of the, right, right. That's right. <laughs> and of course she's from Scotland. Yes. Uh, and, um, just a minute, I can't get a feeling. She's married? Uh, yes, uh-huh. And you've got one Wayne. That's right. <laughs> married, I have one child. One child, uh-huh. One child. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> See? I don't do it too often. My luck runs <laughs> out. Well, keep well the, you've done well. Keep the heat and best of luck. Thank you very much. You right. too. Bye. Go ahead, please. Good morning, Jack. I would like to speak to Phaedra, too, but first of all, a very Merry Christmas to you, and I must tell you that... I love your show, and believe it or not, I gave you gave Gary Bannerman up for you. And I wish you all the best in your trip to Hawaii. Thank you. I'm going to have great fun. And thank you very much. Now to Fedra. Yes. 
And a Merry Christmas to you, Phaedra. Thank you. You too. This is a real treat to be able to talk to you on the telephone. Thank I you. I was wondering what you might see in the future for me in the new year. Um, I feel as if this year has not been the best year for you, and I'm sorry about that. However, I do see some magical stuff happening for you, too. This 85 seems to be bringing a lot of high impulses, good frequencies. So to heck with the economy. Next year is going to be wonderful for you. Thank you, my love. From Nanny Moore, go ahead, please. Hi, Jack. Hi. Merry Christmas. I'm calling from Nanaimo. I was wondering... Hello? Go on. Oh, and I was wondering how many... I'm pregnant right now, and I was wondering when my baby's due. My God, does she have a problem? <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, is this your first baby? Yes, it is, and I was wondering if she knew what it was going to be. Uh, nobody's got a needle and a piece of thread. And if it goes around and around... Goes to the right, it's a boy. Then you... Then goes to the left, it's together, if it goes across the way, try again. <laughs> That's a joke. Just a minute. I've, I've got a feeling... A times, I've got a feeling your baby's going to be born... Oh about the first week in February and it's going to be a girl. You think it's going to be a girl in the first week of February? What do you think? Well, I wanted it to be an Aquarius baby. I think it's going to be an Aquarius baby, but everyone tells me it's due in March, so I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't that far No, out, I, I think that's excellent. It's very good. Mm -hmm. But if you want to test for yourself, I believe it's going to be a little girl too. But if you do want to test for yourself, put a thread inside a needle, as Jack said. Hold it over your tummy. I'll get your man to do it. And if, it, if the needle goes around and around, it's a little girl. If it goes back and forth, it's a little boy. Do you want to fight with me now, Jack, about that? No, I'll take your version, because I haven't done it for many, 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 many years. Okay. More with Fedra and uh, Webster after the break. Thank you. Hi, I'd uh, like to wish you all a Merry Christmas and to say to Jack Webster that everyone knows that behind that gruff and tough exterior, there's a gruff and tough person. And I want to tell him and you that I look forward to appearing again with Jack in the new year, if he'll have me. As a matter of fact, Jack, I was talking to the Prime Minister, Mr. Mulroney, the other day, and he hopes to be back into your studio so that he can take question period. Jack, the style of interview that you've given to the people of British Columbia and the country has made you a legend in your own time. It's revolutionized the style of television broadcasting, and I wish you all good fortune and a lot of great programming in 1985. This is Christmas time. I want to wish you, Jack, a Merry Christmas and all your viewers, and a very happy New Year. Looking forward to, be, to being with you, Jack, again in 1985. Take this call first, if you'll forgive me, Fedra. Go ahead, ma'am. Good morning, Jack. This morning. is Barbara Russell Cox from Woburn Ladies College. Just wish you a very Merry Christmas. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't go away, Barbara Russell Cox. Hold on, please. Something terrible is happening here. Oh, well, it's little Jackie Webster. How are you? Oh, I, I was going to get you to sit on my knee, but I'll take a... Second thought about that. You sit oh, on oh. my knee. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Well, well, I know, I know, little Jackie Webster, that you have sent me a letter. You have sent me a letter, but you made the mistake <laughs> of sending it first class so it won't get the... Oh, oh, oh. Connected to my feet. Be careful. So, uh, did you... Anything you want to tell me that you want for Christmas that you'll get in Palm Springs? Yeah, I've been a good boy. You, I've been a good boy. You've been a good boy? Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, you know, little Santa and his elves have been... Careful the bag now. <laughs> This is Vancouver. It used to be cloth. Now, <laughs> little Santa's elves... This is gift-wrapped. Uh, ...gift-wrapped have been working on this. Mm. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. Okay. Now, who does that look like? <laughs> there you go. Actually, it, uh, it's dressed a little better. Yes, did we... And it's, it's a little slimmer, but that looks very much like little Jack Webster. Yeah, that's right, a little Jack Webster. We've tried to get the smile to stay in the mouth, but it keeps going down. There's a little cigarette for Santa. There you go. Bloody good, eh? 
<laughs> well, I have to go now. I have to go now. Well, uh, thank yeah. you, Santa. But uh, before I go, do you think you could fix my watch for me? Sure. <laughs> Abracadabra. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye-bye. <laughs> it's fixed. Fixed, thank you. Thanks, Santa. Thank you. Be good to all the boys and girls. Don't miss any houses. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you find them everywhere now. <laughs> No. Jackson Davies. Come on back, Jackson. Damn it, damn it. I didn't know. I didn't recognize you. Actually, yes, Santa was busy today because I know my three-year-old son will be watching this. So what Daddy did is Santa was very busy, so Daddy's just kind of helping out Santa today. Jackson, I'm honored indeed by you coming here this well, morning to do and, this. And, and the best of the season and to you. And to you, too. Thank, thank you. you very much, Jackson. What's he, what's he to do? Play. What? Plug the play. Come and plug the play, quick. Plug the play. Actually, I'm playing a member of parliament in a show called, uh, called You Better Watch Out, You Better Not Die. It's uh, situated at the Empress Hotel in Victoria on Christmas Eve. And I play a member of parliament who's there on a date with a lady of the... Uh, Evening. You were late afternoon. Or, uh, <laughs> yes. So a good time will be had by all, yes. Oh, that's great. You don't want to give me the MP it's modeled on, do you? Uh, no, no, his lawyer will be uh, sending me a letter in the morning. If I <laughs> give you a half a dozen names, if you like. <laughs> Thanks again, Jackson. Much obliged. Christmas Eve at the Empress. Now, listen, I've got to get back to my call here. Go ahead, please, Barbara Russell Cox. Hello, Jack. We just want to wish you from Woburn Ladies College a very, very happy Christmas and to say a special thank you to Ann Davidson for a super job that she did on the program and to thank her for her visit. She is terrific. Anybody from your show would be welcome to come and see us any time. I, I suspect that Ann cheated, however. I suspect when you look at her regal dignity and carriage and deportment that she went to a finishing school herself. I'm sure she did. Thank you very much, very much Barbara Russell-Cox. Much obliged. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Now, how about you, Phaedra? Well, we're just busy telling fortunes. Where am I going? Uh, in case we've got Phaedra's phone number we'll put up anyway. Go ahead, please. Oh, good morning, Phaedra. Good morning. Yes, yeah, um, I plan on making a move in 1985. And um, could you tell me anything <coughs> about that? I have a cold this morning. <laughs> oh, that's not fair. That's not fair. Hi. I I hope you're taking lots of water for your cold because that's something that most of us forget to ingest and it's wonderful. Clears everything through you. So please take lots of water today. I will, thank you. And rest a lot. Um, 85 for you I see changing in many different ways. So you have about four different directions mm -hmm. for next year. I do see a move as being a very positive aspect for you. Yeah. So, um, know that that's the very best thing you could do. And as far as relationships are concerned and, and an emotional stress, everything is going to work out very nicely for you. I feel so good about 85 and you're going to get a great deal of benefit from it. Well, thank you very much. Uh, take care of you and a Merry Christmas. Okay, have I got a break now? Merry Christmas, Jack. And I've got some stuff to do, so I want to say thank you to Fedra and I want to put a number up if anybody wants to consult her. Phone Fedra, 922-2376 for Sitchik Psychic <laughs> Consultation. Thank you very much for coming out here this morning, Thanks Fedra. For having me. I hope you'll wait till the end of the program with a little thing we'll do after the program. And in the meantime, I've got to go to Free For Alls and I've got to use my Kamloops story after the break. A very quick thank you to the Kinsman Rehab people in Kamloops, to the Ministry of Human Resources in Kamloops, and I think it's the Okanagan Medical Supply in Vernon. A, a woman I met in Kamloops called Irene McCormick had a real problem with her electric wheelchair. She couldn't charge it inside because of the fumes in the battery. The thing wasn't working properly. She had to leave her door open in very cold weather and charge her wheelchair from a one-room apartment outside. So we made a couple of phone calls, and I must compliment Kinsman and Rehab and the medical I use company my too. Every day, and in the summer I could just back it up to the door, and I could I could charge it just at the door with the door open because that was enough ventilation. But in the winter there wasn't enough ventilation, and my heating unit was under the door, so I couldn't recharge the chair. 
I either had to ask neighbors to come and lift it in and out for me, or else not use the chair for the winter, because it was too cold in Kamloops to leave the door open and no heat on while it charges, because it takes quite a few hours. The MHR did the funding for it, and then the local kinsmen people had come out to do a to see if it was something they could cover, and then their rehab worker, Ivan, said that he would come and do the work for it, which would make it so that he volunteered his time for the work. So that means that I've got, you know, those two people, and I've got, I've got the chair through those two people, and the round through those two people. I had met Jack Webster in a restaurant here locally, and we were talking about my chair and talking about, you know, he asked me how I liked it and what was good about it and so on, and I was telling him how well I liked it and how much freer I was with it, but that I had this one problem, and the one problem was the charging of it. And he asked me about contacting the kinsman, and after he left, the people at the next table said, oh, well, we're members of the kinsman, so we can give you the name of the rehab man here from our local kinsman club. And just the way it worked out seemed to, you know, just sort of fall into place so neatly. If I spelled it out properly, the problem was that she couldn't reach out to a wheelchair with the door closed and she couldn't get outside without a ramp. So the ramp was supplied, the wheelchair was fixed, and I thank everybody involved in the whole thing. Go ahead, please. Jack, a small request. Um, I'm at the fourth floor, Willow Pavilion. Um, VGH. Yes. We don't have a Christmas tree, and it has to be an artificial one. And I wondered if there's anyone who could donate a Christmas tree and decorations. Actually, what? we had one given to us by the powers that be here, but he has no center stock. Maybe this is hospital cutbacks. You I don't want know. an artificial Christmas tree, and you want decorations for the Willow Pavilion. Yeah, this is the Willow Pavilion fourth floor. There are a lot of seriously ill people who've had big operations One, and they're in for some time with people okay, from okay. Campbell River, from Fort St. James, right. from if all over the place. If here. anyone's got a spare one, phone us. Yeah. But if they haven't, we'll make sure one is supplied somehow or other today, fourth floor Willow Pavilion with decorations. Thank you very Thank much. You. And a very, very Bye. happy Christmas to everyone. Bye. Bye. Oh, your name. Your name. Lillian. Lillian. Yes. You're a nurse. No, I'm a patient who said something had to be done about this. Okay, Lillian. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Queen Charlotte, go ahead, please. Sir Jack, this is your Queen Charlotte sweetheart calling. Uh -oh. I've got something to say to you. The truth will out. Okay, thanks for a perfect peek at your organized mayhem, first of all. Appreciate it. I've been longing to know how you work. Come up and see my organization. I'm extending you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year <laughs> invitation. Come up and see me sometime. Okay. Okay, okay. me. Okay, me. Go ahead from Qualicum. Hi, Jack, and a very Merry Christmas to you, Jack. Listen, Jack, I'd love to get on your show, so I thought if I phoned you, you could tell me, I'm sort of semi-retired, you could tell me the subject and the title of a book that I have to write that you would let me come and see you on your show. Maybe you got some titles and subjects you'd like to discuss. Uh, I'll hang up and listen to your answer. Yeah, Thank hang you. up and listen to my answer. But you have to listen in January. My mind, mind isn't that swift this morning. Go ahead, please. Hi there, Jack. Yeah. I want to wish you and um, uh, Jack, too, your other friend there, a very, very Merry Christmas, right? Jackson Davies, yeah. She's there. Can I please talk to her? No, carry on quick. We've only got a minute. Okay, I was wondering if I was going to win it a third time. Win what a third time? The lottery. The lottery. Grand prize, right. I'm looking into my own psychic reserves, and I can tell you right now without fear of contradiction that you will not win the lottery the third time. I must tell you that the Lunch Bucket Theatre Arts Club starts today at Granville Island, the best of beyond the fringe, and it will keep going as long as you keep going. And don't forget Jackson Davies on Christmas Eve at the Empress Hotel, which will be great fun. Empress in Victoria. Actually, it's the Playhouse in Vancouver. <laughs> Who the hell said the Empress? Oh, it's set <laughs> in the Playhouse in Vancouver on Christmas Eve for Jackson Davies. On the Playhouse in Vancouver on Christmas Eve for Jackson Davies. Would you believe it? I stopped drinking altogether last January the 2nd. <laughs> I'm only a little confused this morning. Have I got time to say something? I want to say thanks to all of you people who make this program possible, and all of my staff, and they may drop dead without exception. <laughs> this morning, anyway. 
<laughs> what a great year's work. And I'll be back. Uh, don't forget, Best of Webster's going to be on right throughout the holidays. And don't forget, Caldecott on the 26th and some other good repeat programmes, which I'm sure you'll enjoy because nobody can watch Webster five days a week through the season. I'll be back after the break. Jack, Jack, what do I have to do to get an invitation to appear on your show? It's time we learn to interface in a habitual way, as the nanny said to the parlour maid. They send their best for the holidays. Merry Christmas, Jack. Yeah, you got it wrong again, Webster. The play with Jackson Davies is on now at the Queen Elizabeth Theatre. It's about action in the Empress Hotel on Christmas Eve. Tell people to go now to see Jackson Davies in the play. And don't miss the best of Webster throughout the season. Back live 7th of January. Thank you, everybody. Good morning. This is Jim Boren wishing you a Merry Christmas from Washington, D.C. This is Christmas time. I want to wish you, Jack, the very merriest of Christmas. I'm here to wish my good friend, that lovable rogue, Mr. Jack Webster, happy Christmas. <laughs>